Thank you very much, children. Thank you. Oh, and a present. Three cheers for Miss Hanson. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Master bedroom. Be careful of the chair, the legs are a little delicate. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, we seem to be blocking your way. Well, will they be long? Well, they've only just arrived. I'll have a word. No, don't bother. I'm only going to the farm next door. I can walk. That's very kind. Oh, you've picked yourself a lovely spot. Yes. No more to what's going on? I left it by the cottage. There's a removal van blocking the lane. Oh, aye. Well, the new owner says they'll be gone in an hour or so if you need to get by. Oh, that's decent of them. Yeah, she seems very nice. She's a retired teacher. Teacher? Phew. Are you coming in? <laughs> Quiet, Suki. <laughs> It's all right. Tease me. Too much garden. Dad will be pleased about that. Mm, not having the staff anymore. Mike, they treated their South African servants very well. Oh, I didn't say they didn't. Mm. Yeah, it is nice. It's not too big. Mm, not too near. Whose mm. <laughs> wet throw is this? Have you got a dry cloth? I'm Celia Hansen, by the way. Just moved in. You make an early start for the day, I notice. You and your shotgun. One forgets what a dawn to dust job it is. The prawn to damp for these. Really? Try it now. Wonderful. What a relief. Thank you so much for helping me. Didn't have a lot of choice. No. Well, thank you anyway. You've done a good job there, Frank. I mean, you, you, you wouldn't know the words under it, would you? Bit of grass seed on that, it'd be as good as new. I tell you. Oh, yeah, you did, but you've you, you got to see it to actually believe it, don't you? I only wish I got another field. Others have. What good is that to me? Find me some willing punters and I'll pay your commission. Even easier money, Claude. Well, you know where to find me. Yeah, I reckon you've done all right there. Oh, he's no better, though, isn't he? Mind you, now that we know what he knows, we can go wholesale. What do you mean? When did you ever know me working for commission? You know what the song says? Anything Frank can do, we can do better than cop the lot. He 
Yellow is the color of my true love's hair in the morning when we rise in the morning when we rise that's the time that's the time I love the best blues the color of the sky at night in the morning when we rise in the morning when we rise that's the time that's the time I love the best Stranger to the countryside, Councillor Blaketon. School nature trips were my speciality, but there's manure and there's manure. I'm sure you'll understand that. Um, well, I'm not sure if I do, Miss Hilton. But there's manure, Mr Blaketon, and there's slurry. Mr Foster spreads the latter. Oh, well, it must be something we've got used to. I mean, Foster's been farming Blackbrook now for more than 20 years. He has his own way of doing things, I expect. Just a touch on the tiller is all I'm asking. Perhaps you could speak to his wife. He lives on his own. Ah. His wife left him some years back. Yes, well, whatever you can do, I'd be most grateful. I'll have a word. How long have I known you, Donald? Long enough to know you're always short of money. Yeah, well, I'll give you a chance to make a few, Bob. What do you say? Shut the gate on your way out. Exactly. I'm, I'm not talking just a few pennies, you know. I, I can give you 250 quid for the use of this field for a month. What's the catch? Here we go again. There ain't one. Hi, my name's Mahatma Gandhi. How can a field be worth £250 a month? Shouldn't you be wearing a white sheet and sandals? Look, I, I want to use it as a tip. What we do is we excavate a big hole, right? Then we take away the topsoil. Then I bring in lorry loads of rubble and rubbish. And when we fill the hole up, we, we bring the soil back. It'll be just the same as it was before. I mean, this field's perfect. All right. Yeah. Oh, you, you don't realise it. You, you, you're standing on a gold mine. A graveyard, more like. How do you mean? There's 100 head of cattle buried here already, slaughtered seven years ago during a foot and mouth outbreak. Well, well, that just proves my point, don't it? I mean, who'd know what we're under here now? Well, not you, maybe, but me. I can still smell them. Uh, what, what, what about your, your other field down by the cottage? I'll think about it. Well, well, don't think about it too long. You might miss the boat. I'll think about it. We could dig the hole while you're thinking about it. Well, you've got company. I'll, 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 I'll see about it later. If you've got any sense, you'd let the dogs loose. Well, it's a fine beast you got there, Mr Foster. If it took him as long to do his job as it takes you to speak your business, he'd be on a butcher's slab. <laughs> well, it's your new neighbour. Well, she's been wondering why you have to start shooting at six o'clock in the morning. You what? Some people need their beauty sleep, especially if they've retired. I'm not retired. Not you. Uh, are you telling me she's complained? Well, let's just say I'm here on a goodwill mission, right? Fools are more like... You can tell teacher I'll not be standing in no corner. I'll do what I want, when I want. And if I'm out shooting, you can tell her to keep out of my sights. Hi, Phil. What are you doing here? I had to drop something off at the place house for Mike. Too miserable to put the kettle on, was he? Got it in one. Did you get a look at the new deco? Deco? Oh, yeah. Must have cost the constabulary a bob or two. Unless Jackie Stokes insisted on paying for it. I'm saying nothing. Mike tells me you've cried off going to the opening of that new club with them. Yeah, well, you know how it is. Since I chucked Dandy, I haven't exactly been the life and soul. They're really disappointed. I know. I just couldn't face it. You were wasted on that, Charlie. No need to try too hard. Your cup was coming. I mean it. I know. You're a mate. So how about you, me, Mike and Jackie going to that opening? No, Phil. I can't. Yes, you can. And I guarantee you'll have a great time. Trust me.
It's all right. of a public footpath by an animal or anything else is a county council matter, Miss Hanson. Yes, well, that is somewhat different. No, well, Gina was adamant. She didn't want to go when I asked. Well, that was you. This is me. Is there any chance of you two concentrating on the job in hand? Sorry, I'll fire away. Spurs versus Nottingham Forest. Uh, way win. Agreed. Blackburn Rovers versus Don't. Still here, Barney? Uh, just going, Sarge. This is for you, Bradley. A Miss Hanson of Lee Cottage in a bit of a lather about marauding cows. Sounds like a neighbour dispute. Was that you put her through to me, Ventress? Uh, yes, Sarge. You were too busy to handle it yourself? Uh, she wanted to speak to someone in authority, Sarge. Well, if she calls again, try and assume some, will you? Mr. Foster. Aye. Miss uh, Hanson has made a complaint, sir. Uh, can we uh, can we talk about this inside, please? No. Right. Well, um, Miss Hanson says you released a bull into a field where the public have a right of way. To a what? My bull's no danger to anybody. I haven't got a rush in him. Do you expect people to take your word for that? They can please themselves. Miss Hanson also says that one of your cows got into her garden and ruined her washing. Is that true? Well, how would I know? I saw it with my own eyes. Criminal damage at the very least. Have you no better to do? Uh, frankly, yes. So if you could show a bit more consideration to your neighbour, we'd all be happy, wouldn't we? Uh, perhaps an offer of compensation on the clothing would settle the matter. Oh, well, you think so? Fine. Check it out at Station Petty Cash. So what did you advise her to do? Well, I told her to shorten her washing line. Helpful as ever. Oh, come on. She must have known what it'd be like living next to a farm. Well, she probably fell in love with a cottage and didn't think it through. Ah, uh, yeah, but that's not Don Foster's fault, is it? Yeah, well, he's too used to having his own way. That's his trouble. No wife, you mean? Exactly. Mm. I heard some gossip about that, actually. About what? About the way his wife suddenly disappeared. Oh? Huh? It was only tittle-tattle. Oh, sounds intriguing. I'll tell you on the way. That's fixed. She's more like her old self. Yeah, good move, Phil. Well, she's in her element. Warm atmosphere, live band, good company. Thank you, thank you. Right, we've got a real treat for you now. We've got a member of the audience going to come up and sing with us. Gina Ward. Gina, can you come up? Whose idea is this? I'll strangle you. Knock them dead! Oh, no. I've already got one, Claude. I oh, know you've got two, but who's counting? Hey, this business you've been talking about, will there be any money in advance? It's in an envelope in my pocket. Say the word and it could be in yours. Cheers. Hello, Oscar. Ah, Maggie. No Gina tonight? No, she's uh, gone off to a do. Oh, good. It's about time she came out of morning. Um, I'll have a G&T, please. Right. You'll never know that I still love you so Only heartaches remain I'll do my crying in the Falling from heaven could never wash away my misery. But since we're not together, I look for stormy weather.
to hide these tears I hope you'll never see Revenue and the bank on my back. Well, that sounds if I come along at the right time then. Yeah, all these wagons coming and going, I'm not so sure. Wagons coming and going? Is this another torture you're planning to inflict on Miss Anson? You what? It's her torturing me. Oh, aye, very likely. Oh, don't look at me, Oscar. I'm not taking sides. Why not? Everybody else is having a go at me. Well, it does seem a shame to start a retirement like this. Shame? She plonks herself down and expects everybody to dance to her tune. Do this, do that. Typical teacher. Calm down, Donald. I'll calm down when I'm in a box. Till then, I'll have me say. We're not in here, you won't. Are you going to stop me? D Donald. If you want to put your big nose in Blake to nap, she'd have shut up me now. I think you've had enough, Greengrass. Take him home, will you? Put that back. I, I, th I think we probably ought to... Get... Put it back. Or you can have this and all. Hey! Don't threaten me, Foster. I'm not a small, defenceless woman like Miss Anson. I, I just paid two and threepence for that. Right, that's it. Get out of here, the pair of you. Get out! And don't come back! You're barred! Barred! Sounds like a flaming sheep. What do you want to go and do that for? Where's that money? What? Hey. You dump your rubbish, Claude, and the closer to teacher's front door, the better. I thought after the police visit, things would improve. Are you sure about this, Oscar? I heard enough to know what they were up to. But Foster and Greengrass would need planning approval. You know, it could be the sort of rubbish that leaches into the water course or attracts vermin. Oh, please, stop. Well, I'm acting for Mr Foster on a new tenancy agreement, so I'll have to ask one of my partners to handle this. Stick them with others. This lot wants sorting out, Don. Give us a meal. Revenue. Bank. Animal feed bill. Stick it behind the clock with the others. Aye, all right. There's are hotels. That's a front solicitor. That'll be about my new tenancy agreement. No, they're acting on behalf of that teacher. They're threatening your legal action if you cause her any more nuisance. Hey, 
Is this where Frank Jarvis gets all his rubbish from? Yeah, it might be. Fair bit on it, isn't it? Yeah. And we've got the old to stick it in. Oh, look at that. Hey, how much do you reckon they want for that? You haven't really got the hang of all this, have you? We don't, we don't buy things from them. They pay us to take the stuff away. All right. Uh, keep your eye on the lorry. I'll go and see if I can find the gift. Good morning. Come on, Greengrass. Waste disposal. Could be your lucky day. <laughs> I won't be a Where'd you get that? Oh, you're over there. There's all sorts of stuff. Is there? Well, don't get too attached to it, or you might follow it down the hole. Hey, did you have him up with a gaffer? He's going to give us 15 quid for every load we take away. You stick with your Uncle Claude. You know what they say, where there's muck? There's you. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> you think I should call Gina? Nah, she'll be all right now. She's had a good cry. Yeah, she didn't say a word on the way back. I feel responsible. Well, I should hope so. It was a terrible idea. Yes, madam? I'd like to speak to someone with authority, please. Well, perhaps I could help. Thank you. No. Hello, Miss Hanson. Uh, have you been in the wars? That's exactly what it is, Constable. War. <laughs> Greengrass? I could be. Skinner from the District Council Planning Office. Uh, what can we do for you? Councillor Blaketon has warned us of possible planning infringements in the area. Blaketon? He was once a copper and now he's a politician, so I won't put too much money on what he says. Do you know Frank Jarvis, Mr Greengrass? Jarvis? Oh, I don't think so, why? We believe he's been tipping waste without planning permission. I see. And that, 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 that's bad, is it? Depends if you're sitting on top of it, Mr. Greengrass. Shut up! <laughs> now what? Well, Mr. Foster, I'm investigating a serious assault <laughs> on Miss Hanson. And what's that got to do with me? She says she was set upon and bitten by one of your dogs. Bitten? Badly enough to need stitches in a tetanus jab. Did you, uh, did you untie them? And what if I did? Dogs can't be tied up all day. The law holds owners responsible for their animals, Mr Foster. At best, you could be sent to court for failure to control. At worst, a charge of assault. Either way, it would result in a destruction order for your dogs. Nee. Talk sense, man. Try to warn you, Mr Foster. <laughs> Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Greengrass. If you're approached by Jarvis, I trust you'll give me a call. Of course. <laughs> I wouldn't wait up. Go and put the kettle on. Eh? Uh, is that your field? Oh, 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 uh, oh yes, yes. All for a fresh topsoil there, Mr. Greengrass? Uh, yes, well, I'm uh, th thinking of planting some carrots. Are really planting carrots? I sometimes wonder if you're taking the what's it. But so while he's looking for Jarvis, it'll keep him off our backs. Kettle. The last time I was here, it was very spartan. It's lovely. Thank you. I heard about your injury. Oh, that's very efficient of you. It, it really isn't serious enough to bring you out of your way. The first 
year class was my favourite. Rogues and angels, I love them all. I can say that now. Quite a change to this. Yes, though it isn't as quiet as I'd expected. It takes time to convert some of the natives. Well, I hope I'm not trying to do that. Do you know Mr Foster? Not well. I knew his wife better. She tried hard to stick it, but I'm afraid the foot and mouth outbreak was the last straw. Oh, that must have been hard on him. Hmm. What made it worse was when Joan disappeared without trace one day and people started asking him what he'd done with her. Really? Bar in Buncombe, but you can't stop them once they start. You must have been terrified when those dogs attacked you. Yes. They'll probably have to be put down now. Oh, surely not. One of those things. Ah, oh, Philip. Hello, Oscar. Tina in? Yeah. How is she? Well, you know. Phil? Tina? I just thought I'd, uh, better pop in. Well, I'm glad you have, because I just wanted to say thanks for last night. Yeah? Yeah. A real tonic. Just what I needed. Oh. Was there something you wanted? Yeah. I'll have a pint. Come on. There's a good girl. Come on. Ah. You better move that car or I'll drive straight through it. Keep me. As long as it takes. It was an accident. Really? Obvious. Tractor's been playing up for a while. Only there's a pattern, you see, Mr Foster. You what? Of threatening behaviour. Ah, oh, maybe so. But this was an accident. I'll drive straight through it. That's what he said. You'd better move that car or I'll drive straight through it. Yes. How many more times? Just to be sure. I took the second bale off the trailer. I went to throw it over the wall. When I turned round, the tractor were on its way. There were no tackle do. Come in. Sarge, can I have a word? I've got to get back for milking. Lynn can't cope by himself. We'll get a message to him. Oh. So, he threatened to do it. Well, strictly speaking, the threat was to the car. Yeah, but they in it or behind it. What's the difference? You've heard the rumours concerning the disappearance of his wife. Uh, yes, Sarge. Thanks for letting me know. By the time I turned round, the tractor was on its way. There was nothing I could do. I've told you all that. I've got to get back. When you found Miss Hanson blocking that road, do you remember what you said to her? Let me help. You better move that car or I'll drive straight through it. It was said in the heat of the moment. Yes, but you did say it. It wasn't meant. It's obvious. As you keep saying it's obvious, but what seems obvious to me is that you meant every word. No! You don't like women much, do you, Foster? You what? You've already told me about your wife leaving you. What's that got to do with it? I've had enough of your daft questions. Sit down! So you don't bear a grudge against Miss Hanson? No. Pals now, is it? Oh, 
wouldn't say that. Well, I'm sure you wouldn't, because she's turned your life upside down, hasn't she? No wonder you're in such a rage. I'm not in a rage. I'm just trying to earn a living. And she wouldn't let you? No, she no. wouldn't. No. You're putting words in my mouth now. The truth is, ever since she came here, you've made that poor woman's life a misery. You think what you like. I've got things to do that can't wait. You're incensed because she's invaded your territory. I've got to go. So you turned your bull into that field, you set your dogs on her, you fired guns within feet of her home, and then finally you tried to run her over. That's what you tried to do, isn't it? You tried to run her over. Yes. What's happened? Foster's confessed to trying to mow her down. Confessed? Don't ask. Can I go now? No. But I've signed it. Sit down, Mr. Foster. We'd best get him a solicitor, Sarge. Fine by me. Then I want you to follow up another line of inquiry. What's that, Sarge? Foster's wife. I want to interview her. No, Ventress. I want to know if she's still alive. He's not here. You all have got him. No, it's you I want to talk to. Oh, I. Joan Foster. You were working here when she left. Yeah. Was it uh, a sudden decision? How do you mean? Well, was it uh, a surprise when she went? Yeah, no. She wasn't very happy. You could see that. But fine folk usually stick it out, whatever. Did they row? The finish. It was a rough time. We slaughtered all heard in one day. Boss went a bit mad. You can't blame Joan for going. Didn't you say cheerio or anything? Not to me. And you've no idea where she went? Is there a photo of her around? There's one behind clock. Yeah. If it wasn't true, why did you sign it? I had to get back, but he kept going on at me. All I wanted to do was shut him up and get out. So I signed it, and they still wouldn't let me go. Started on about Joan. Joan? The wife. She'd been gone seven years, and he expects me to know where she is. You should have asked for me sooner. There were no to it. It was an accident, plain and simple. She could have registered in the name of Foster or maybe a maiden name Phillips. Joan Phillips or Joan Foster. As soon as you can. Yeah, check I... if any new accounts were open in either name. Yes. Anything of interest? Thank you very much. I've uh, got a lead on a woman who went south. London? No. Pickering. Well, Sergeant. Would you like to tear up Mr. Foster's statement and start again? No, I'll stick with the one I've got, thanks. So you think a confession extracted by bullying can convince a court, do you? Me bully that mountain of a man? How on earth would I do that? You'll be granting him bail, I presume? Sorry, no. Well, why not? We have further inquiries to make, and in view of the threat he poses to Miss Hanson, I shall be asking for remand in custody. For heaven's sake! This man isn't a villain. When the red mist descends, I think he's capable of anything. Well, I'm surprised at you, Alf. her a couple of times. Why? Well, I'm trying to trace her. What, in connection with this case? Oh, sort of. Craddock reckons that if uh, Foster was capable of this assault, what else? Oh. Well, in my day, that would mean putting two and two together, making 22. Exactly. Mind you, he did have the perfect opportunity and the right place to dispose of a body. I know, and well, there's a lot of digging. Mm -hmm. Just think of the overtime. No, thank you. But I found someone who swears that Joan Foster latched onto a guest house owner from Pickering. So I'll keep him my fingers crossed. 
Oh, not you again. What are they doing here? Don't you come on your own? These gentlemen are here to check your field, Mr Greengrass. Check me? F what for? Evidence of unauthorised tipping. Really? Well, they can take a tip from me and tip off and you can join them. I can bring the police next time, Mr Greengrass. Time has told me You're rare, I find Trouble cure For a troubled mind What are those men doing, Mr Greengrass? They're trying to dig up some dirt on me and Frank Jarvis. They won't have to go down all that far, either. Well, shall I go and give them a hand? What for? So they think we've got nothing to hide. Like a hundred lorry loads of rubbish. Don't talk daft. We'll need divine intervention if we're going to get out of this lot. I think I think I'll be going to have a word with Don Foster, tell him to keep his trap shut. And while I'm gone, you keep your eyes and ears open and everything else closed. Did they make you comfortable? I've had worse nights. Well, let's hope you won't have to get used to it. I have to persuade the bench that you pose no threat to Miss Hanson. And then they'll let me go? Well, hopefully. Until trial proper, but with certain conditions. Like what? That you don't go anywhere near Miss Hanson. No fear of that. Well, there was a man lived in a shed. Spend most of his days on his head. For his shed was rotten. Said it was enough to drive a man insane. Where's Mr. Greengrass? Oh, you. Um, he had to go out. It'd come up lovely, innit? Sergeant. Still no news from Alf, and uh, Phil's inquiries have come to a dead end. Sorry. Like Joan Foster, perhaps. May I have a word, Sergeant? Yes, of course, Miss Hanson. I couldn't sleep last night for thinking of Mr. Foster. Rest assured, we'll stop him from bothering you. No, wait, well, it isn't that. I've taught children for over 30 years, Sergeant, and in a way they've taught me about people. I know Mr. Foster's a cussed, ill-tempered individual, but he's not a bad man. Well, that's very generous of you, Miss Hanson, but we have a confession that he intended to harm you. He set his dogs on you. You've got the scars to prove it. Well, no. You see, I haven't. I'm sorry? I lied about the dogs, Sergeant. They were really after my Suki. Uh, naturally, she was terrified, and when I reached out to calm her, I... She bit you? Yes. Even the tractor incident wouldn't have happened if I'd got my car in proper working order. Miss Hanson... Despite your admission, you are not to blame. Mr. Foster has brought this on himself. But it's rather hard on him, don't you think? No, I don't. And further inquiries may yet confirm my view. All rise, please. All right, here, excuse me. Further inquiries? Routine follow up. Can't we stop all this now, Constable? I'm looking for a hard headed Sorry. woman. Excuse me. One who would take me for myself And if I find my hard-headed woman Please see Alf Ventress, I will need see nobody else No, 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 no Sorry. I'm looking for a hard-headed woman, headed woman One who will make me do my Morning, madam. Uh, PC Alf Ventress, Ashford Lee Police. Uh, do you recognise this lady? Oh, sorry, I don't. Tell. I know the rest of my life will be blessed. Yes. Since Miss Hanson moved in, Mr. Foster has waged a campaign of intimidation against her, culminating in an assault from which she was lucky to escape. In a signed statement, Mr. Foster has admitted his intention of harming Miss Hanson, and in view of the proximity of her home to Blackbrook Farm, I request a remand in custody to avert any similar incidents. 
In court? That's what I said. Well, uh, how long is he likely to be there? Who knows? Only, only you see, I've, I've got a bit of a problem. I, I might have to postpone the arrangement to make with him. I doubt that'll be the first thing on his mind right now. I, know. I hope he's not spent any of that advance I gave him. No, he gave it to me. Did he? There's a bit of luck. He owed me three weeks' wages. Uh, really? Your Worships, when this case comes to trial, my client will plead not guilty. The confession referred to was extracted after hostile questioning. Confused and anxious to return to his livestock, Mr Foster finally signed whatever was put in front of him. What's all this got to do with the bail application, Mrs Bradley? Well, the so-called assault was an accident, Your Worship. Mr Foster did not and does not wish Miss Hanson any harm. And if it pleased the bench to grant bail, they may be sure he poses no threat. Thank you. Sergeant? Your Worships, Mr Foster checked the wording of his statement and signed of his own free will. I am concerned he is still a danger to this lady and I urge you to remand him in custody. Stand up, please, Mr Foster. To clarify the circumstances in which you made your statement, We'd like to hear your own account of what happened. Yes, Your Worship. Take the oath, please. I'm sorry, Your Worship. You prefer to make the declaration? Aye. Out loud, please, Mr Foster. Your Worship, I'm sorry. I can't read. Do we conclude from this that you couldn't read what you were signing? Yes, Your Worship. Hello. Sorry, love, we're full. No matter, love. You've made my day. Please, everybody, if we can move to the top of the lane, it's going to be a lot safer. Thank you very much. Come on, that's good. Thank you very much. What, what's going on, David? Well, they're not letting anybody through, Mr Greengrass. Why not? Well, I reckon there might be an explosion. Hey, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what you all have found, but Jarvis assured me that that's no but builders rubble there. And uh, I mean, if I'd even have thought the road, I wouldn't have let it near the place. Yeah, we'll deal with that in due course. The immediate problem we have is the unexploded bomb in your shed. The, the what? I found your lad polishing it. Well, where, where'd you find it? Well, where we got all that. How many times have I told you about collecting knickknacks? Well, my mum's had one of them for years as a doorstop. It's never given her a bit of trouble. But, but, but who, who says this one's live, anyway? My colleagues. They say it could go off at any moment and take the whole house with it. Right. Excuse me. Uh, come on, sir. I've told you once, if you'd like to, uh... Hold it there, Claude. Sorry, nobody's stopping me going on my own property. But... Wait for the bomb disposal officers. Mr Greengrass! Claude! But if that's how you feel, Miss Hanson, there's no point in us pressing charges. Sergeant, it's a great weight off my conscience. Message from Alf, Sergeant. Uh, Joan Foster. She's alive and well. Oh. That's that, then. Can't beat a happy ending, can you? Uh, it's as dead as a doornail! Put it down, Claude. Gently. You'd, you'd need to drop that on somebody's head to do them any damage. Just get rid of it, Claude. Where do you want it? <laughs> hey! Not here. Right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take it right in the middle of that field, provided he gives me no more aggravation about dumping waste. Well? What? It's very irregular. Oh, for crying out loud. Do you want him scattered all over Aidan's field? That would be an environmental disaster. Very well. I'll be back. <laughs> 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 
Mr. Foster. Miss. The police are going to drop the case completely. Right. Oh, I'm so pleased it's all over. Is it possible, do you think, for us to call a truce and try again? Well, if that's what you want. I want that more than anything. Well, I don't see why not, then. Deal? Done. Better a friend than a foe? I suppose. Just so long as it doesn't come to reading books. <laughs> Get a move on, Claude. It's a good job we didn't have to rely on you lot during the war. You're like a load of old women. Come on, everybody, move back. Come on, are you all right? Mr. Greengrass! Oh. Oh. Are you all right, Mr. Greengrass? Yeah. No thanks to you. I bet that made a bit of a crater. Why don't you do us all a favour and go and chuck yourself in it? 